Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our series on 787. We're currently en route uh, from the lovely Bradley International to Baltimore, Washington International Airport. And we're just about ready to begin our descent and the landing sequence. Uh, there's a lot that goes on during this. I remember a big, big, big heavy plane here. So there's a lot of little things we need to think about. Let's get started. So we climb inside, of course, and I'm noticing off there in the distance, uh, Copes and TD are basically coincided. This is going to be where we're going to start descending into the BWI area. Now, in the previous video, we had already pre-designed, pre-selected, got all of our navigational items selected, our approach is selected, our ILS approach is selected, everything's basically ready to go. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I suddenly got an error message that popped up reminding me that I want to go ahead and set my cruise altitude correctly, depending, of course, what air traffic control does for you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom altitude that I want to get to. Uh, this is basically going to be the altitude of the, basically the start of the ILS approach into a runway 28 there. And you can see I've got 3,000 feet selected. Uh, that's going to be my first item that I'm going to be interested in. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. If I press init ref, by the way, notice that it brings me to this page. If I press index and come down here to the word approach, I can now check all my approach data. There's a lot of information we want here. We have all of our different flap options on this side, as well as our recommended speeds on this side. Now, if I like these, I can simply click on the one I'm interested in and then select the one that I have selected. Notice, by the way, there's a built-in wind correction item here. This is awesome. Uh, this means we don't have to fit with it. Uh, we can actually adjust the wind here rather than trying to adjust this number the way that we normally do it. Now, this 139 is going to be very valuable to us because it's basically going to be what's determining what speed we're going to be coming down to a landing at, which is going to be important to us. Another thing we want to keep an eye out here is, again, I love the fact that since I've already pre-selected this, by the way, if you didn't pre-select this, you can always come up here and then click on this button, and it'll give you the ability to do that at that time. Now, the other thing we want to do, and now this is really important, it's kind of one of those steps that we get so used to everything automatic that we forget to check. But if you click on Nav Rad, uh, you just want to double check to make sure your ILS and GLS is set correctly. Now, if you come down here, you'll see it's 10970A285. This is the correct frequency for the particular ILS approach that we're going to be utilizing. Notice, by the way, the two VOR radios are kept separate here. So if we wanted to, of course, we could dial in the 10970 to here and actually fly it as a VOR approach if we want to be that way. Now, do you see what that, my throttle just did? Now, the other thing you're going to observe is over on the left, this aircraft now starts a precipitous descent. Now, you're saying they're going, but you didn't tell it. Yes, I did. By changing the altitude in the MCP and making sure VNAV was selected, the computer automatically said, it's time to go, and decided to descend. And I think I heard a flight attendant bounce off the ceiling back there. So probably not the best situation to do. A lot of times what people actually do is they'll start that descent manually, and then what they will do is they'll then go ahead and let the VNAV take their hands. And just because you can does not necessarily mean you should. And if you take a look here, my VNAV path here is, um, whoa, it's 4,000 feet per minute. That's, um, that's aggressive, very aggressive. By the way, speaking of VNAV, if you were to actually bring up the VNAV page here, this is where all that good VNAV stuff is. If you needed to, for example, to come in here and actually define a specific speed. By the way, see this 2,000 at or above? Uh, that's that altitude I was mentioning before. I chose 3,000 to give us a little bit more wiggly room above that initial approach fix there. And of course, you can see the selected speed is going to change as we descend. Now, one of the cool things here is I can actually come in here and dial in my own private speed restriction that can actually change the performance of this particular descent here. Uh, the advantage there, of course, is right now the speed is like about 342, which is insanity. If I wanted to, I could set this at 250 right now, which would severely limit my vertical speed. Of course, it would have a massive tweak on my actual approach profile as well. Now, a really, really fun thing to do, by the way, if you come here and you press the center button, you can actually adjust the way that this is displayed here, which is just kind of neat because uh, some people really, really like to kind of see it that way as a way to estimate. Now, since we're coming down, there's a couple things I do want. Now, one thing, of course, is I want to turn on my terrain view. Uh, the terrain view is going to provide us with a pretty good look at things around. It's not perfect. Uh, we're getting an FMC warning here. It's just going to get really, really angry. Don't worry about it too much. Unable to maintain VNAV. Descent speed. Extend speed brakes as required. Shh. Shh. It's okay. Uh, don't worry about that yet. Uh, we'll extend the speed brakes when we need to. And again, the people who designed this FMS chose that to be my descent point based on some calculation that they engaged upon. Hence this insanely high speed descent here. Normally, again, if you're the captain and they say descend to 21,000, which having flown in here a few times, that's what they're going to do. Um, you could probably do this differently. Also keep in mind, we are not using a terminal approach procedure here. We're just using a direct instrument approach to land. This little needle, by the way, on that you've probably seen is our VNAV reliability needle, or not reliability, it's basically how good of a job we're doing here. And you can see right now that we are perfect. Our little uh, magenta needle is right here in the center, which means our VNAV path, we're right on path 
literally perfect here. So we're going to proceed down here as we're, again, enjoy the ride downhill as I ricochet a bunch of flight attendants in the back. Uh, one thing you probably noticed, and I didn't mention this in the previous video, this little bubble down here, this is STD. It's not that one. It's not short-term disability, or you know what I'm referring to. It actually means standard barometric pressure. Uh, right now, our altimeter, when you cross 18,000 feet in the U.S., we're supposed to press the button to enable the standard uh, altimeter here because it just simplified, especially at these higher altitudes. When you descend under 18,000 feet, it's important that you dial in the appropriate barometric pressure for wherever we're going. So in this case, you know, if I call it in or you listen to ATIS or AWAS, uh, they'll tell you that, you know, the pressure is X, Y, and Z. So that's when we actually come down here. If you probably observed, did you see how it had that little orange box around it? It's just trying to remind us that we do need to adjust that on our way down here. And you can see we're uh, coming down pretty darn fast at uh, getting ready for our approach. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that approach as uh, we're enjoying our descent here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be executing a right turn at 2,000 feet at Hertz. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll descend this down to 2,000 feet. This part of Maryland is very flat, so 2,000 feet is accurate. That's actually pretty good for an ILS approach. So we're going to be coming down here, crossing this, basically taking a right, and then our runway is going to be sitting there waiting for us down here. Now, they've talked a lot about the auto land capability of this aircraft, and um, we will demonstrate that for you. Don't worry. It's, uh, it's not going to be very pleasant, as you'll notice. And again, the nice thing about those features is they only work on specific ILS runways with specific configurations, specific crew training. There's so many different pieces that you have to get literally perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to when we get a little bit closer. Now, ah, perfect. Now, you can see we're starting to get very, very close to 10,000 feet. We're about 11,000 feet right now. You'll notice that the aircraft automatically pitched its nose upward for the purposes of basically enabling us to slow down. Right now, by the way, our, idle, our throttle is completely idle right now. We're just chilling. And the reason for this is because of the fact that uh, we need to get under 250 knots before crossing the 10,000 foot mark. As a matter of fact, if you actually come over here, you'll see 240 is selected to give us a 10 knot wiggly room. Now, if we were bad people, we could come in here and we could actually change that number right here if we wanted to. Uh, again, if we wanted to be really, really silly, you know, we could come in here and do one of these kind of things and it'll actually get mad at me. So a 250, we're going to do slash and we'll go ahead and do 10,000 just like, oop. <laughs> I wonder how many times I've done that. <laughs> clear, 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 clear. I like how you have to clear the descent. Clear the D, 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 clear word. I'll go do one of those things like that. And you can see now I've actually changed my speed limit to uh, 250. And again, that's not going to change until we cross that magical line there. And it's just kind of one of those little things. Notice, by the way, my VNAV is furious at me. And it's actually showing that we're massively under our glide slope. This is completely predicted. Uh, we knew this would happen again. We can remember that extremely aggressive descent when they're yelling at us to basically engage the speed brakes. They didn't do that well. And that's something with time, they're going to get that smoother and smoother and smoother. But it also really emphasizes the point I've been making, which is where you want to be able to actually have those kind of pieces. Now, by the way, if we were kind of interested, we could actually kill the VNAV here and take direct control of the screen and basically dial in anything that we want. You know, we could do a flight level change if we wanted here. But again, the VNAV does help us out considerably, assuming you've got that all set up. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward to we're getting a little bit closer. But before I do that, we're going to get an angry message about speed brakes. Don't worry about it. We're fine. We did cross the 10,000 feet, so I'm going to go ahead and flip on the landing light so people can see us nicely. All right. So now we're getting very close to our approach, and it's a good time to go ahead and get our last couple options all kind of pre-set up and uh, ready to rock for us. The first thing we're going to want to do here is, as we're coming close, is we're going to arm the approach. To do that, I'm going to come over here and press the app button. When you do this, all you're doing is arming it. And if you take a look here, you'll see these two lights popped on, meaning it's ready, but it's not actually engaged. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dial in our minimums here. Uh, we're going to be using 200 feet today. It's going to be a radar minimum. Whoa! <laughs> I wouldn't go that high. That would be a very, 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 very high minimum there. Kind of amusing if you think about it, but I don't think I recommend that. All right, 200 feet. Again, again keep it kind of simple. Again, you'll have to check the actual flight plan itself. And you can see that updating on both screens. Welcome to uh, Flight Sim, by the way. The acceleration sometimes is just a little too much. 201, 2010, 201. There we go, 200 feet. It's very irritating in the real world. All right, so one of the things you're going to observe is the aircraft is now slowed down, and we're going to get a big angry message here. Like I said, this is going to come up about 10 times during your approach. And now we can get everything all queued up and ready for actual landing. Notice, by the way, that in a few moments, so when we get a little tiny bit closer, you're going to see the lock as well as the VNAV. There's the localizer. We've captured that. So now we're actually on the localizer for a navigational source, where this is going to flash at us and get pretty grumpy. So one of the things you see here is I'm getting a little slow. You know, I'm sitting here at uh, 200 knots right now, and uh, this is uh, way too slow for us. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop in that first notch. And you're going to notice as soon as I do so, this thing is going to go ahead and uh, pick what speed it wants to go ahead and uh, get itself down. 
I'm gonna set it to 205 knots. If you're wondering where the speed comes from, that's gonna be basically our minimum speed for our initial part of our approach. Now, if you look out the window here, you can see very clearly a runway 28 looking there ready for us. So we're gonna start our slowing down process right away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and back my speed down a little bit. And we're just gonna go slowly, slowly getting ourselves down to that 139 knots that we have selected. So to make this possible, it's a very, very simple on our part. I'm just gonna go ahead and set the 139. The aircraft is gonna start slowing down and I can start feeding in the flaps a little bit at a time as they start to get a little bit closer. So keep in mind, this aircraft is not having a lot of drag at this time. And you can see I've just crossed that point there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll pop my landing gear down as well. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my automatic brake. We're gonna go ahead and use brake three today. Aircraft continues its descent. There's a little bit of turbulence, so nothing too, too scary. We're going to arm the speed brakes. We're just going to put it into the arm position, just like that. A little tricky to set it to the arm. Ah, I don't want to activate the speed brakes. And now it's simply a matter of approaching and slowly bringing in each notch of flaps as we cross the respective point on that little piece there. So looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and get that next notch in as we come in a little lower. If we want to confirm our notches, we can just look right over here on the right. You can see we're at 17 right now. There's your 17 point. And remember, we need 30 degrees of flaps uh, when we get to our approach speed of 139 here. So the flaps are coming down, and we can see our approach speed is beautiful. We can see our landing gear is set correctly. We can see our landing lights are set correctly. Everything looks excellent. Uh, one of the things we can do, what I like about this aircraft, is I can press the checkle button and press the normal, and we can actually say landing. So one of the things you can do is you can check speed brake set, landing gears down, flaps set. And then we know that our landing gear and everything's ready to rock. And now, oh, this is one of the things that's nice about airliners that we can't get away with in a lot of other airplanes, is now we could just oh, take a nice little nice relax down to BWI here. Looks like we have a little bit of a crosswind here, which does not surprise me in the slightest. Um, I, of course, uh, the engines are going to be controlled automatically here, assuming you've got that all set. If for some reason this gets all dancy and jumpy on you, it usually means that your throttle is overriding their throttle. So I uh, just double check to see if that is happening, that it is something that you can basically grab. Yeah, see how that throttle is uh, coming back up here. So double check it. So what you're going to see is you're going to see this message as it just appeared that said AP and land three. What that refers to is that says that the automatic landing sequence is now armed. If this does not say land three, it does not mean you're going to get the automatic land. You'll also see this thing that says roll out and you'll see flare. These two settings are going to be the settings responsible for getting us safely down onto the ground. Now, keep in mind, auto land, it's, um... Ah, uh, what's the best way to describe this? It's a little bumpy. <laughs> it's one of those things where I am not an expert at landing a 787 any day of the week, but you'll find the auto land to be ready. Again, if this just says, you know, glide slope or something like that, you do not get to these two modes. Notice these two modes are armed. What I want you to also observe is see how much the airplane is oscillating and pitch there. Uh, that is just the way that the autopilot has been set up. It is, um, I often recommend people to just, just fly it by hand if you can, but for the purposes of demonstrating, we will do the automatic landing here just for fun. Notice, by the way, that uh, we're getting 139 here, and this is we're getting a ground speed of 132, so we have about a 7 knot or 8 knot headwind here, which doesn't surprise me. It's also slightly off. Now, I love this part. See this little uh, triangle right here? This is going to tell us what's going on with our speed right now. When this triangle starts climbing this way, it means we're going fast. It climbs the other way, it means we're getting a little bit slow. Again, notice that oscillation. That's just the way that they programmed the autopilot. Oh boy, my hand is on to get ready for go around. By the way, get ready for go around, so I'm just gonna set up my 4,000 feet, get ready on that toga button. Trains appearing on screen. Oh, I hate this part. I hate it, I hate it, I hate this part to death. Just relax. Let the magic happen. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do its own thing here. And again, this is what's amusing. Hey, it's a place where you can get your rental cars. <laughs> I've flown here way too many times, I hate to say. All right, we're going to get over the end of the runway here. Notice how steep that is. There's the radio altimeter warning. And here we go. I hate this part. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it so much. Now watch this. Flare. There's the flare. Oh, I'm not going to win any awards for that one. <laughs> Autopilot disconnect. Now we're responsible for going ahead and putting in a reverse, applying full reverse. Oh man, that is uh, that is tough. Notice by the way, it gives you the uh, braking amounts right on the screen. So like if I hold this much brake, this is brake one. Like right here yeah, is braking one. Isn't that kind of cool? So if I squeeze, braking max. Just neat that they actually took the time to put that little detail in there. We're here. Oopsie daisies. Oh, that's so bad on the front wheel. I would have taken the front wheel right off doing something like that. So that concludes our video on this absolutely wild aircraft. And as well as, like I said, doing a little automatic landing at the end. 
I didn't say it was a smooth automatic landing. I said it was an automatic landing kind of a thing. And you're going to get all sorts of angry warnings and things like that when you first come in. Uh, don't worry about that too, too much. It's just going to be the nature of the beast. And again, that autopilot disconnect that's now blaring in your ears and all those. So as you can see, this is an incredibly impressive aircraft. It does so many things so well. And again, because of that, it again gives you those abilities to do so many cool things as well as what you saw. And uh, one thing I will say is if you're going to go really, 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 really long distances with this aircraft, make sure you have the right amount of fuel on board. You'd be uh, very, very surprised how easily uh, this thing can chew through it. One thing we do after landing, by the way, is we typically fire up the APU because we're probably going to have to switch over to those modes once we get ourselves back at the gate. Enjoy.